think back to the last time that you saw a televised sporting event with, with a crowd. And within that crowd, as the cameras kind of pan through the crowd, you often saw a sign that just simply said, John 316. Do you know what that sign is? Do you know what it's referring to? Well, if you just heard the gospel, you do. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. In what is probably the most famous passage in Scripture, or one of the, certainly one of the most, if not the most famous passage in Scripture, this Scripture is brought to every sporting event, many concerts, and many other public events, just by the simple mention of the phrasing, John 316. And you see it on t-shirts, you see it on bumper stickers, and it's so well known that all we need to hear is John 316. But so often we might see it, people might see it, and not know what it is. Well, here it is. And it's a, a powerful passage, and it's a core belief in our faith that God loves the world, that he loves what he has created. He loves who he has created. And in doing so, loves all that we are. Maybe not all that we do, but all that we are and all that we could be. You know, during this pandemic time, so many people have stepped up, have really shown their mettle, and um, have gone above and beyond. I think of our uh, healthcare workers, I think of our public service personnel, I think of our essential workers, I think of all those people out in the public square, out and about every day, while we're sheltering in place, while we're quarantined, while we're social distancing, that they're right there in the fray. That's God's love. That's, a, that's, a, that's emblematic of God's love. And they may not even know it. They may not even realize it. But it is God working through them to serve their communities in very and varied, many and varied ways. Because God, again, another part of this truth, the second part of this truth, that anyone that God gave loves the world. And so out of love, he gave us Jesus Christ. He gave us Jesus Christ so that we might not perish, but might have eternal life if we believe, if we follow the Lord, and not just know about the Lord, but really know the Lord and are in relationship with the Lord, are in an intimate relationship with the one who has come to bring life and life abundantly. It is that eternal life through the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that has been won for us. And we have that eternal life through this self-giving gift, this canonic, this empty, self-emptying gift. And Jesus himself comes into our hearts if we invite him, if we let him in. Because Jesus isn't going to barge his way in, although he did kind of barge in on the apostles <laughs> after the resurrection, bless you. Uh, after the resurrection, he, he barged in on the apostles through the locked doors and he offered them his peace. We think of last Sunday's reading when he appears to the apostles in the locked upper room and he says he offers them his peace. Uh, but in our everyday life, he's not going to barge in, but we can invite him in. We can certainly invite him in by our prayers, uh, by our lives by how we carry ourselves in the world, how we serve our brothers and sisters, how we come to recognize the presence of God at work in our lives and are boldly ready to share him with all whom we meet. That is how we uh, come into this sense of eternal life. Uh, it begins with the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ through his own passion, death, and resurrection and recognizing this gift that we ourselves are called to emulate. We may not call, be called like the martyrs of our church, like Christ, to physically give of ourselves, but we are called to die to self so that Christ might live in us. That dying to self is part of that love uh, that God places on our hearts, 
to serve our brothers and sisters in need. Uh, and we must pray for, we must reach out to those who do not believe so that they may not be condemned, so that they might have that gift of eternal life as well. Because if not us, then who? And if not now, then when? And even though we are social distancing, we can still reach out to people through various media portals, uh, through things like Zoom and Skype and FaceTime. Uh, I've been doing a lot of that lately, way more than I ever have in my priesthood. Uh, but it is a wonderful opportunity for me to connect with my people and to, for us to connect with one another, uh, even in this time of social distancing, so that we can bring light into the world, Christ's light into the world. Uh, for indeed, we are called to be people of the light. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us come to recognize the opportunities God gives to us each and every day to be people of light and life, the light that breaks through all darkness and the life of Christ brought into the world.